Hey Hellbirds, here we are with round two action in the nine ball division of the 2023 Derby City Classic. We have Chris Reinhold and Earl Age. I'm not sure if that's how you say his last name or not. If I mispronounced it, my apologies to Earl. That is Earl at the table right now. He won the coin flip. Both players have zero losses in this round two match. I'm being joined by Mark White. How you doing, Mark? Thanks for joining us. Thank you, Kevin. Yeah, interesting little thing I picked up there. They're using the coin on the table as the scorer, and I used to hate that when I was playing. Why put something on the cloth when you don't need to? There's, there's beads above. Old school, I guess. Old style. I did never understand it. It's very helpful to me, though, because on camera, I can't see the beads over the table, but I can see the coins on the table, so I can always use that as confirmation that I have the score correct. So I, I appreciate it. There you go. Two different perspectives. Yeah, my perspective is from the streamer, not from the player. <laughs> yeah, I don't know much about Earl either. Maybe he's named after Earl Strickland. You never know. Chris Reinhold will be more known to viewers. Played in two Moscone Cups. Formerly Chris Robinson decided to take the name of his stepfather who was raised him. And to use Chris's words, he was the father my father growing up and I want his name so nice little gesture there all right that Chris also missed. a very very accomplished photographer you'll often see him at the tournaments carrying his camera around with his big long lens on takes some great pictures let's see if he can shoot as good as he shoots with his camera. <laughs> it looks like Earl has a little bit of a masse there. Nice shot. Unfortunately, no look at the two. Yeah, no real future in playing that shot, was there? No, I think that was uh, pretty much always going to be the result. Well, look at this for a kick. Oh, look at this for mind. a kick. Never mind. Yeah, same problem though. <laughs> same problem again. Perhaps okay, it's going to turn into a, a Masayan kicking competition. How oh, did he hit this one? Beautifully played. Oh, is this oh, one look at going this. in too? Kick this in as well. Oh, Whoa. no. Yeah, once again, very, very, very close. And this time did have shape on the four ball. So a little bit unfortunate there. Chris just making sure the four does pass the six. So it doesn't. That's why he's come this side. That's a nice shot. I thought Earl was going to, was trying to uh, make a whole highlight reel just of his own shots here. First two would set, certainly have got there. Oh, he's overdone that, has he? No, he's all right. Well, uh, he's just clipped the nine. That's because he caught that four ball a little bit too thin which changed of course the path of the cue ball and he's got the double kiss there shaky start <clears throat> looks like he's lining up this combination not interested in any type of safety all offense it looks like certainly the way he started isn't it it 
Yeah, he's lining up that combination. Combination bake? Nope. Left it tough for Chris, though. Oh, he handles it, and no love. I just typed in Earl Age or Arge, however you want to say it, into Google, and it came up. Did you mean Early Age Earl Strickland? <laughs> <laughs> So that didn't work. But this young man at the table, 27 years old from Ventura. You know, I can't blame him for wanting to go for the kick here. Especially if he can hit it without scratching oh. in the side. <laughs> wow. Well. Well, that is against the rules at Derby City. You are not allowed to concede, especially when there's three balls left on the table. That could even be yeah, considered unsportsmanlike. Yeah, I agree with that as well. And I saw it happen over the weekend in a couple of matches at the McDermott Classic. And I must admit, I'm not a fan of it. it shouldn't be allowed. And maybe... You know, it's it's born out of frustration, isn't it? It's not like just like he tapped the ball. It's like he was. It was a little bit of, I wouldn't say anger, but frustration, shall we say? Yes. And, you know, we've all been there. We've all done it. As you know, I do some commentary on the pool tour as well. On the pro billiard series and it's not allowed to be done on any table that's well it's not allowed to be done on any table that's streamed and of course they're all streamed these days so right but it does happen occasionally and the players do get a warning for it well at derby city you're supposed to lose an extra game if you do that yeah, that was going to be my suggestion as a punish punishment, actually, but I don't want to be too harsh. Well, he just tried to get that cue ball in there, just came up just a hair short, but I like this thinking. Yeah, nice shot here for Chris. Just play the one into the two. Bring the cue ball back down this side of the table. Get some cover behind the six and seven, maybe. Can also go the other way. Play the cue ball into the two. Oh, he's gone for the bank. Very aggressive. Just trying to draw into the three to hold for the two. Now, this is makeable down the rail. You know, when he's feathering, when he's doing his little pre-stroke routine, he looks really nice and smooth and a nice rhythm. And then all of a sudden, there's that quick little backswing and then a very, very quick snatchy stroke. So he needs to do something about that. It's a good observation. Hopefully, if Earl watches this video back, he will take note of that. And if Chris was feeling frustrated before, that's not going to help things. Yeah, he won't want to watch that back. No. He was trying to steal a bit of the pocket there, but hit it absolutely dead straight. 
The only good thing you can take out of that, of course, is he's queuing nice and straight and smooth. So, good opportunity here for Earl to extend his lead. Ball in hand with a pretty wide open table. He has maybe a little more angle on his three than he would have liked. But he should still be able to work with this. Just have a look at this action again. There you see the nice prelims. And then that little stabby stab stab. Yep. Maybe bump the six here just to uh, help hold the cue ball for the five in the side and also maybe to make the six a little bit easier to make if it doesn't go past the seven. I can't tell if the six passes the seven or not. But if you bump it, then it shouldn't be any problems. Yeah, and that's what can go wrong. That's why players tend not to bump balls if not necessary. Definitely. Can always go wrong. And it all stemmed from the bad shot he played with ball in hand on the two, left himself too much angle on the three, and then didn't play a good three to four. And that's caused him to miss the five. So it's a snowball effect, really, multiplying the problem. Oh, that's you see a nice the contrast. Shot. Yeah, nice little contrasting styles there. Perfect view of the queuing arm of Chris Reinhold. Does a lot of instructional videos and drills that he puts on his face uh, on his YouTube channel. So everyone, be sure to go check that out. Uh, and he says that good. That's good. So I guess we're gonna have a lot of conceding of games uh, this set. I'm predicting. Yeah, but once again, not a fan of that. To be honest, make the play up, make the shot because. How is a player ever going to feel any little bit of pressure? You know, there's always that little bit of extra pressure on the nine. You know, doesn't matter how easy it is. And if you're never giving your opponent that feeling, then, you know, there's no tension going to build. And plus, you're almost kind of waiting for your opponent to give you the ball if you start off in that vein, you know? So I don't like it. Just pot the balls. That's why they're there. There's only nine of them. Just pot them. I've actually been known to ask my opponent to not give me the ball. If they, if they, if they say that's good, I say, that's okay, I prefer to shoot them. Um, so that's kind of, you know, I've, I've worked my way through the entire rack. I've clawed my way to get to the nine ball, but the nine ball is the only one that actually wins me the game. Don't rob me of the satisfaction of making the game-winning ball. I want, I, want to, uh, I want to pocket that ball because, you know, that's what, I've, that's what it all led up to. Don't rob me of that. Absolutely. 100% with you there on every single level. Yep, totally agree. So we see, replay the break, making a ball. Made two Oops. balls, in fact. Oh, no, one. He's just made the one ball there. Sorry. And not yeah. a very good shot either. Yeah, Chris hooked himself while, uh, while we were watching the break. So here, let's uh, watch this shot and see how he, how he hooked himself. Yeah, 
shouldn't have been anywhere near that eight ball just didn't get any left hand spin on it to drag the cue ball over that side and then you saw a successful kick but he's left a chance here now for Earl in the side well it's a long way off showing signs of nerves Kevin at the moment not sure what age Earl is <laughs> doesn't look very old oh does he have a look at this two ball that would be unfortunate for Chris if he does yeah he's going to make this as well he's going for this draw off the side route a little bit of left hand English just to hold it check it off that side rail slightly doesn't want to go behind the eight like Chris did oh he's gone the other side I didn't realize he could hit that side of it what a shot that is that was a nice shot looks like he's drawing I think he could follow and go between the nine five for the five in the same corner as the three hey, well he's got a shot to the side not an easy shot and you have to put this you have to put a little bit of pace on this to come back across for the six makes this very missable oh he's drawing this oh he's playing safe okay it's the first safety I've seen from him. No, it isn't. That's the second yeah, one. And it's turned out okay. It has. Especially with the no break cue rule we have here at Derby City. You can jump the ball, but you must use your full playing cue. No jump cues. Shorten wow. it up a little too much. All right, that safety has earned Earl a ball in hand with a pretty wide open uh, layout. Earl just waiting for a player on the next table to complete his shot. Doesn't want to impede him. You know, now that you've pointed it out, I can't not see it. His nice fluid warm-up strokes and then the final delivery is kind of short and jabby. I can't not see it now. I know, it's there you see it again. Nice, nice back swings. Nice little preparation and that quick little... And, you know, it's, it's so difficult to come back quick and then go through, beginning slowly and speeding through the cue ball. It's just such a difficult task but he's getting through them it stroke. might not look pretty <laughs> stroke analysis provided at no extra charge It's one of them strokes that when it's working, it's okay. But when it's not, when you're not quite on top form, you've got no real foundations and technique to go back and check on. You know, it's just that's the way you play and that's the way it is kind of thing. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, if you're the, if you're struggling with consistency, if you're playing great one day and absolutely awful the next day and no consistency from day to day, there's a good chance it's your fundamentals and, you know, go have a look at your fundamentals or have a coach look at your fundamentals even better. All the top players have coaches. It's not, it's not just for beginner players. I mean, absolutely. A prime example, Kelly Fisher, who 
I know I bring her up a lot, but I know a lot about her because we're good friends and we talk about this kind of thing. And she's had the same coach for over 30 years, a guy called Lionel Payne, who's been with her since she started playing at age 12, I believe it was, when she started. And, you know, even now, she's still working on technique. And I was watching her the other day in the final and I, I sent her a message and said you are queuing so much better and she said yeah i've changed that because she's got this very quick snatchy action and she's always struggled with the slow backswing but she's just working so hard now at, at, on that particular part of her game and it she just looks a different player she's definitely getting the results winning almost everything she plays in Yeah, and, that, and that's a prime example. You know, she did go through a little... She won the first eight, I think, events that she played in. And then she couldn't win one for about three events. And, you know, her confidence went. And it was that technique that I'm talking about. And even a player of that, you know, multiple world snooker and pool champion, still at the age of 42, I think she is now, to, to still be working so hard and hungry to improve just goes to show you know that's what champions are made of they have to keep you know as the game changes as the balls change the cues change the cloth changes the size of the pockets change there's more great players coming through the more that changes you have to keep reinventing yourself and and you know growing with the game and if you don't you get left behind Speaking of left, that was a great left-handed shot there by Chris. You have to just stop me sometimes because I could go on about a five-minute <laughs> rant and two, two racks have gone by and uh, we've not mentioned the shots at all. So apologies in advance for that. But, you know, I'm passionate about that side of the game and I think it's just so important. A little bit short of pace there. Three rails around. Just like that. This needs Ooh. to slow up. But it did. There you see the nice little slow backswing, slight pause, and then begins the delivery of the queue just looks so much smoother and better as well and it's more predictable nicely done Chris Reinhold levels it up 2-2 two, two in a race to nine we are your hosts Kevin Ross being joined by Mark White lots of matches to watch give us a like and subscribe guys turn your notifications on and then i love them you know get a little reminder pop up on your phone this is starting this has just been uploaded all good never have to miss a ball Well, there's a ball missing, <laughs> but unfortunately, it's the cue ball. So nice, easy start up. I 
don't know about you, Kevin. The more I watch Paul, the more I want to play it. Then we're we're doing our job. If we're uh, motivating you to go out and play pool, we're doing our job. Yeah, such a great innovation for our sport, of course, was the internet. Just so much content available. So yeah, much advice available, but be careful. Don't believe everything you see. <laughs> yeah, not all advice is created equal. Choose wisely. That was nicely played. Yeah, he's left this a bit thinner. Yeah, but the five ball is a pretty big target, so it's okay that it's a tough shot on the four. That five's a big target. Although it looks well, like he's, he's digging down the four. on this. Interesting. I thought for yeah. sure he would have uh, played the combination to the five. Yeah, not sure about that one. I think. The cut was available to the side. The combo was available. The carom was available. He did have options. Don't be surprised if Chris makes the five here. Don't be surprised if he plays a little safety as well. This is very, very acute angle into the side. Could play it down to the end. Bump into the six and leave him behind the seven. Oh, he went all out for it in the side. That was a very aggressive shot, I thought. And he's left this. The angle looks pretty natural to come around short side of the six to shoot the six in the same upper left corner as the four. Yeah, good call. Little flick off the nine there. You see him giving it a little bit of head English there. Sometimes we <laughs> see hip English. That was a bit of head English. A little simple, little safety, simple but usually effective. Yeah, we're not playing 10 ball, Chris. He just called the bottom right hand pocket. Oh, did he? <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, didn't expect that though. I think that's the fourth scratch we've seen from Chris. Averaging averaging one a game, that's not a good average. Before we came on out today, Kevin, I was watching the semi-final of the World Temple in Vegas between Sanchez Ruiz and Fedor Gorst. And that famous... Last rack, three fouled Fedor Gorst. When Gorst was on two, made a perfect hit on the four, and the cue ball followed it into the pocket, cost him the match. Heartbreak. So much movement on that. We're all regaining the lead. 3-2 against Chris Reinhold in this race to nine.
part of the nine ball tour of course another one the US Open which entries opened up yesterday and 256 players sold out in eight hours September 25th 2023 Harrah's Resort and Casino Atlantic City that's the place to be for that you know I just noticed Earl breaks with his shooting cue he doesn't have a separate break cue not that it means anything I just thought that was interesting oh, yeah nice the only reason there. Any reason people don't really like using their playing cue to break is because they don't want to misshape the tip, you know, deform the tip. Yeah, that's the main reason. And some people like to have a different uh, break cue because they like to have a harder tip and a, maybe a you know stiffer, stiffer shaft, maybe a different weight cue. You know, it's not that you're going to do any damage to your playing cue other than, like you say, the tip. I want to see a tournament where no playing cues or jump cues are allowed. You're only allowed to use your break cue. I can remember a tournament I was commentating in Ohio and the butcher from Poland, Mieszko Fortunski, was playing and he broke the tip on his playing cue and played the rest of the match. About eight racks he played with his with his break cue. Wow. Well, I think Earl would be uh, all set for that uh, tournament that you speak of. You know, we have to use your break cue because he breaks with his playing cue. So he's already all set. He's ready to go. Chris, a nice family boy. His mum comes to watch him play a lot, as does his stepdad, and he's got a younger brother as well. didn't want to catch that eight ball that's a mistake no but he has left distance he yeah, just needs to smooth this one in He's going low. Yeah, there's that stab again. I really... If I could tell him anything, I'd love him to work on that backswing. It's just too quick. It, it just looks ugly, Kevin. Now, the big question, does that five pass... Look definitely passes to the side does it pass to the corner I'm guessing yes from the way he's played that three yeah he doesn't seem too concerned about it If there are balls on top of the Accurac, that's how you get them out of the way. You just shoot them off the rack. That's how you get them out of the way so you can remove it. Chris doesn't waste a lot of time at the table, does he? 
No, he's good to watch in full flow. He's not Still one of these players. He's not one of these players that will uh, sit there and agonize for three minutes over a straight in shot. Yeah, and there again, we see that given that nine ball, and that was a little bit close to the rail. Yeah, it's missable. To be giving that. It certainly is missable. Especially on these four and a quarter inch think, uh, diamond pockets. Yeah, I think it's when you get a player. You know, a six three five against a seven four five. There might be a little bit of, you know, oh, I'm playing against the top pro, one of my idols. You, you know, you're, you're feeling a little bit generous towards them, even you know. And it should be the complete opposite because they're going to kill you if they can. Make them earn it. Free shot at that, really. Had he made the one, he was perfect on this two seven six combo. <laughs> <laughs> Unmissable. <laughs> Even I wouldn't go for that. Has it poked his, I think it's poked his nose out. I think he might be able to make this. Well, he's opened up the six, seven, and eight as well. Awkward queuing over the seven, though. Very difficult to control the cue ball. Did well. How many times in your life have you scratched in the side pocket on a shot like that? Oh. You know it's going to happen as well, <laughs> and you just can't help yourself. You think, oh, it won't happen this time. Physics, geometry, refractions, whatever you want to call it. Mathematics, don't lie. Another left-handed shot. Seems pretty comfortable with the left-handed shot, doesn't he? Yeah, and Chris will grow in confidence now. Sure, he can see his opponent is struggling. Hey, turn off your ringer, Mark. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm sorry? <laughs> no, I heard somebody's phone uh, going off in the background. Aha. Uh -huh. I was going to say, no one ever calls me. I never have to leave my phone on silent because it never rings. <laughs> <laughs> He's 
see him moving the coin around one more time. That will keep Kevin Ross very, very happy. He can keep an eye on the score. Is it right? 5-3, Kevin? 5-3. 5-3 is the correct score. Now then, all, finally makes that one inside. Got to be quick here because Chris has already got his shooting cue out and he's ready to shoot. All right, that's all you get to see because he's shooting. <laughs> he's too quick. It's like that match we did the other night where both players were so quick I never got to do a replay. Yeah, that was a crazy game, wasn't it? Ruben Jason, Batista it and Adam Wheeler. What did oh, you yes, say? that one. No, I thought it was, you meant the Jason Shaw one. That was pretty quick as well. <laughs> Yeah, that one too. Look how effortless he moves this cue ball around. Oh, did he uh, let this one get away a little? Yeah, he's sped up just a little bit there. He two stroke that. Nicely done. All right, good recovery. Yeah, just look at the difference. This is a great angle to see this. Watch this stroke. Beautiful. Since I was actually paying attention to his stroke on those last two shots, made me uh, notice that, that a little bit of a hitch in his stroke on uh, on his final on his final warm up stroke. Interesting. Hitch. Yeah, a little a uh, little hiccup in his stroke on his backswing on his final on his final backswing. Did it two shots in a row, so I don't think it was just a fluke. If you're just joining us, you have tuned into the Stroke Analysis Channel. <laughs> yeah, and here comes our second example. feeling he needs to win this rack now Earl yeah easy one and two to get started with what's his plan for this three is he gonna play this three eight combination did a little gesture there where he wasn't happy with that one ball that he just played Oh, he's trying to and get up above see the once three. Again. Yeah, oh, he's played wow. a good shot there, actually. That's a great shot. Nice shot there, Earl. He's certainly got the knowledge. He knows the way around the table. He can make balls. It's just that the cue ball just gets away from him occasionally. I think he's at that point in his game where he's about to make a a jump.
if he gets the if he gets that stroke really smoothed out, I think you're going to see a jump in his game. Yeah, it's definitely the key to improve. I always say to players, if you're not winning tournaments and you know getting some high finishes, there's something in your game which needs to be worked on. You can't keep doing the same thing and expect different results. Sometimes it's not even all about, you know, practice and putting the time in. It's putting the time in doing the right things right rather than, you know, just continuously doing bad things. But this has been a nice little run out, this, interspersed with a few tricky little shots. But he's managed it. That was a nice run out there by Earl. Just some players, Kevin, who you look at and you feel confident that they're going to run the table. Whereas with him, you never know. It could just go wrong all of a sudden with one little bad stab. Nice bit of ball juggling there. Did you see what he did there? He was just about to put that two ball at the back and then realised halfway through and just flipped it around as he was racking it. <laughs> <laughs> Gets to move that coin around. One more diamond. He's now on four. Chris looking to make his coin all the way round to this diamond in the middle of this rail nearest to us. Yeah, very soft break. Watch out, nine. Oh, he's playing it ultra thin. Good effort. Kind of a worst case scenario there with two ball just hanging up in the in the pocket. Easy shot for Chris. Yeah, and more importantly, nothing to do with a cue ball. Naturally gonna come down for the three. Wow, he did thread the needle there pretty nicely. <sighs> yeah, got a lot closer to that five than I thought he would. A little bit short. Might run into the five here. Yeah, that's gone wrong. Played it much too soft. Switching hands. Yeah, and there's that dreadful bridge that we see. Players who switch <laughs> their hands. The main problem is usually the bridge hand, isn't it? It's just not natural. It looks <laughs> like a funny. beginner. <laughs> well, I think he's had a little bit of a, a run there. Have to go close to the nine ball with a cue ball off the route, try and kick it into that top left. Safety has paid off. Nat 
neutral position for the six. Just a nice little stun over for the seven to the same pocket. And Chris, one of those players who's sort of just outside the elites, but you know, better than that, better than the, well, certainly better than average, but you know what I mean, he's just above the lower level pros as well, he's sort of in that little no man's land at the right. moment, just needs a little bit of a win in a big tournament to elevate him to the next level, but he's on his way here, 7-4 now. Oh, sure. Now that I choose not to do a replay, now you take your time. Whew, close. Yeah, I think there might be. Oh, no, there isn't. I wonder if he'd be tempted to kick this in. Certainly took a risk going that way. At first you don't succeed, you try and try again to scratch in that corner. Has been a theme, hasn't it, of this match? A few scratches, they begin to mount up. I think that's number five, is it, for Chris Reinhold? Yeah, but who's counting? <laughs> well, apparently you are. <laughs> oh, you just can't get settled on this one. Oh. Played it very well, though. See three wheel and the two out of here. Yes, he is. All right, that's a nice shot. Nicely done. Yeah, once again, Chris has got to be careful here. Because believe it or not, there's a scratch on off of this two ball. He doesn't want to clip it thin from behind. He wants to just hit two rails and clip it in. He's okay. He's oh. almost, he's almost made it. He's got the nine moving. Long distance, cue ball on the rail. Not easy, even though the two's close to the pocket. Yeah, watch the side pocket as well. Oh, he's handled that nicely.
this is the key shot make this the wreck is yours miss it the wreck is Chris's yep that's gonna that's gonna hurt <laughs> Over hit. Nice recovery. So this night ball to get on the hill. Oh, he's giving it to him again. This is final break for this set. Dry break. Pretty wide yeah, open. This is a shot of the one here. Yeah. A little bit hampered by the six and nine. You'll also notice if you watch his backhand, it's just slightly forward of the vertical as well, which is not really ideal either. There that you see just slightly forward of the vertical. Yep. So you're already losing that, you know, couple of inches on your on your follow through. Played that nice, can't begrudge him a little bit of a run there. Yep, still got a little bit of work to do. The four to the five is not too straightforward. English in the cue ball. Yeah, slow it down. Don't rush into anything. It is a natural tendency when you uh, fall short on a shot to want to just immediately shoot the first thing that comes to mind because you're just so frustrated and it's okay to... Uh, Take a second step back and regroup, which he did. Yeah, the hardest shot to play is the next shot. <laughs> there he goes again. He called. Uh, <laughs> he called something in the side pocket. The eight ball, maybe. Chris is inventing his own rules for the Derby City Classic. <laughs> Call shot nine ball. <laughs> I 
Oh, that could be the that could be the set. <laughs> Rocked it to sleep, as Sherry likes to say. I like that one. I've never heard that one. Tell your lovely wife I like that one. Oh, oh dear. Tell her, and tell Bad her I Chris. hate that one. <laughs> Bad Chris. Bad Chris. <laughs> All right, Earl. Here's your chance. Yeah, Bad miss, Chris. <laughs> There's nothing worse than having to go on and play another rack. Especially when you know you haven't got any breaks left. After you had a great chance to win the match. I'm not saying it's going to cost him the match, but just does put that little bit of doubt in the head. Yeah, because there, we've all done it. We've all been on the hill in a match and yet still found a way to lose I'm sure it's happened to all of us it's happened to me not me I never get to the hill <laughs> and it's easy to start doubting yourself even when you're, when you're on the hill you might be thinking is this going to be another one of those times where I'm on the hill and I still lose <laughs> Maybe, maybe I'm the only one that uh, is that negative. It's probably just me. There's lots of percentages always banded about about how much the game is in the mind. Some say it's 80%, some say it's 90%. I mean, you could say it's even higher than that because you can do everything else right, but if your head's in the wrong place and there's self-doubt and no confidence then you can be doing everything else right but still suffer so huge part of the game i think it's fair to say is in the head i nearly said mind then i've got stuck between two there kevin <laughs> it's all in the med oh that's a nice shot yeah it is This isn't an easy hit. No. Cue ball between the three and the nine, maybe. Off the back rail. Possible three rail. On the side. Coming down here. The short rail. Right hand mm. side rail. Looks a bit wide to me, this. Oh, oh it's nice great. Hit. What a great hit that was. And he's got him hooked. What a shot. Well, he, he secretly had loved that shot, didn't he? He enjoyed that one. Well worth another look. <clears throat> yeah, great escape. Well, is this on? Hard to tell. It could be. How's that for a definitive answer? All right, I'll give you a more definitive answer. Yes, it is. Stop shot, three right in the side. Yeah, if it's straight, this is perfect. Let the cue ball run on. Didn't really grab hold of the cue ball. 
Yeah, unfortunately, I don't think that three goes to that upper right corner. I don't think it has a path. Taking it to the top left, I think. I think so. Oh, that's a nice shot. That's in. Nice cue ball, too. It's a nice shot. Yeah, went all in there, didn't he? Oh, dear. Oh, dear. And there's what I was talking about earlier. It's always the next shot. That's the tough one after you've made such a great shot. What a gift. Huh, that was an interesting way to play that. Yeah, I don't quite know how he played that, but he got there. And what a let off for Chris Reinhold this is. Some inside left English on this. The way he was stroking balls and going multiple rails before, I expected him to go back and forth a couple rails. He surprised me by uh, soft uh, stroking it there. This nine ball then for the match and a place in the next round. The handshake. All right, Chris does uh, defeat Earl 9-5. to five. Earl had zero losses, so he's not out of this tournament. If he wants to rebuy, we have he has one rebuy left if he wants to use it. Chris does advance to round three with zero losses. Thank you guys for watching. We're going to have plenty more matches from the Derby City coming up, so be sure to subscribe and turn on your notifications so you don't miss a match. All right, I'm Kevin Ross and Mark White, and we'll catch you guys on the next one. See you guys.